Good morning and welcome. We come as we are to worship God. I'm hoping we're going to share um, Psalm 121, um, which is a song of ascents, a sacred song that's believed to have been sung by pilgrims traveling the ancient road to Jerusalem. It's more commonly known today as the Traveller's Psalm, and we're going to be thinking about journeying with Jesus. And so this psalm seemed to fit, Psalm 121, and it's been put together by All We Can, the Methodist Church Relief Movement. So let us consider God's presence, God's protection, and God's eternal love and hope for each one of us. Dear God, I lift up my eyes, drawing them back to focus on you. I look behind me to see the trail of my life. Where were you? I look closely and see the hallmarks of your presence, strength, patience, peace, joy and comfort. You watch over me, over each step I take. Where does my help come from? It comes from you. You are the same always. You were with me. You are with me. You will be with me forever. I lift up my eyes to you. God of wisdom, hear my prayer. Amen. So we sing together two songs, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord is Here and Faithful One. Thank you, Vanessa.
And so we come to God in prayer. Let us pray. We are here, Lord, to worship you, to give you praise and glory, to honour your name. We look to you, the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is filled with your glory. You are blessed. You call us to be with you, to leave our old lives and be created in new lives with you, Lord, our God. We give thanks in your holy name. We marvel at the world you made, all the living things, the enormous variety of creatures, plants, and landscapes. We give thanks for your presence, fulfilling our hopes, giving support in our daily struggles in life. We confess, Lord, that when we are unable to cope with dilemmas, that we sometimes forget all about you. We don't automatically pray to you. We struggle on our own. We need to change, Lord, so that you are first in our hearts and we ask for your support in order to do this. When we journey in life, we can decide to travel alone. We leave you behind, Lord. Help us to realise that we need you on our journey. Amen.
Thank you. Now we're going to hear two readings now, which um, the, the worship leading team at Annaby Park set these some time ago, Vanessa, didn't they? And it's amazing, isn't it, how scripture is set and is brought to us today, and they're both very relevant readings. So the first one is from Isaiah. We're going to listen to full chapter 55. It isn't too long, it's 13 verses, and then we're going to hear the gospel reading, which is from Luke chapter 15. Thank you. <laughs> the prophet Isaiah, <clears throat> chapter 55. Come all of you who are thirsty... Come to the waters, and you, will, you who have no money, come buy and eat. Without money and without cost, why spend money on what is not bread, or your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good, and your soul will de delight in the riches, richness of the affair. Give ear to and come to me. Hear me, that your soul may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations that do not know you will hasten to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread to the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into song before you. And all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the pine tree. Instead of the briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown. For an everlasting sign which will not be destroyed. Amen. Luke chapter 13, verses 1 to 9. Repent or perish. Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus answered, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, 
and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig round it and fertilise it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Amen. Thank you. We're going to sing a hymn now, which it's an old hymn, and uh, our organist at Brough loves playing this um, song. I know Vanessa wasn't uh, familiar with the tune, but it is based on Psalm 139. Oh God, you search me and you know me. God knows everything about us, what's on our thoughts, our minds, what worries us, what brings us joy and happiness. And so we're going to sing this psalm. Thanks, Vanessa. Thanks, Jane. Yeah, it's a new one to us, so I'll play it through. Um, and the words are on the screen, so try and sing the words in your head, just so that you can hear how they fit together. Um, and then we'll have a go together. It'll be good. Thank you. Beautiful words, aren't they? That hymn. Psalm 139, that's uh, where the song was written from. So Jesus takes us on a journey. We recently had a friend and her two young children stay with us. And unfamiliar to the surroundings around here, we decided to take them across to the other side of the river via the Humber Bridge. 
And even two minutes into the journey, I heard the phrase, are we nearly there yet? <laughs> I'm sure you've heard that phrase before. Well, what they didn't know was that journey across the river um, wasn't always as quick as it is today. I've got a photograph. I hope John can maybe share it. And uh, does anybody know where that is? It's the pier, yeah. It's Victoria Pier. And there are the benches, yeah? The ben and <laughs> it used to have a shelter. It used to be a station there, um, even though it wasn't a railway station. And you caught the Humber Ferry. Um, lots of people nodding their heads. I have a really, really vague, vague memory, and I, and I dread to think how long ago it was, of, of going on that trip across to Grimsby. Um, I don't know how long the journey took, but I'm sure it wasn't... It took ages. I bet you're all thinking, are we nearly there yet? <laughs> um, it was there and it linked the river, the Humber, uh, between the Kingston on Hull to New Holland. And that was until the Humber Bridge opened in 1981. Whilst the journey to Grimsby or Lincolnshire, for many now is not the epic journey it used to be, that's unless you're a bit worried about heights and you don't like crossing that bridge. It's, uh, it's one of a journey, a journey across the river local to us. There's lots of journeys, lots of famous routes across the world, aren't there? Route 66, the Orient Express, the Silk Road, linking China to the Middle East and Europe. More recently, it uh, has become the involvement of the North Coast 500. Have you heard of this? This is in Scotland. You've done it. Wow. It's, it's described as Scotland's ultimate road trip. A journey of over 500 miles. 516, I'm told, to be exact. That's if you do it. I bet it's easy to do that, to actually go off the journey, off the route. Seeing the white sandy beaches, the rugged mountains, remote fishing villages, hidden gems. It's described as a beautiful road trip. I wonder what parts of your life journey you recognise today. Today, it would be hard for us, wouldn't it, to ignore the journeys that millions are taking right now. Crossing borders, seeking refuge, looking for shelter and love and hope. People on journeys not necessarily marked by a well-trodden route. Whether I want a physical, emotional or spiritual journey, God calls us to journey with him. Journey with Christ, behind, ahead, beside. The Bible is full of journeys. Many biblical figures were called upon to undergo an epic journey like Moses leading the people out of slavery. Psalm 23 is a psalm that many people love. The Lord's my shepherd. It speaks of journeying through life's ups and downs. Jesus had a journey. A journey trying to teach and show people God's way. A journey of love, a journey of sacrifice, a journey to the cross, and ultimately to his resurrection. St. Paul takes the gospel of Christ and travels a journey met with conflict and imprisonment. Yet we rarely read in Paul's letters, do we, uh, any isolation or loneliness there. St. Paul's on a journey with Christ, full of passion, full of the Holy Spirit. We read in his letters, 
a sharing of joy and blessing and peace, even when he's writing these letters in prison. Today's Old Testament reading that Brian read from the prophet Isaiah then is so relevant for us today on life's journey. The prophet speaks about against corrupt leaders. He spoke up for the disadvantaged and reminded those who would hear his words to root righteousness in God's holiness. Isaiah tells us of God's gracious, free invitation to all. He tells us that we are to be richly fed and watered, especially those who thirst. We don't have to bring money or wealth. God offers something that money cannot buy, a deep satisfaction and peace that only comes when we invite and accept God right into the heart of our lives. That too comes from accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour, not because of anything we have done, but because of what God has done for us. And then, can we allow God's Holy Spirit to transform every one of us? All this is free. God is speaking to the discouraged people through the prophet Isaiah. He speaks to people in captivity, people whose future was uncertain, those whose lives were hard. Isaiah calls the people to journey from thirst and longing to fulfillment, joy and peace. How do we do this? Three things that Isaiah tells us to do. We must listen carefully. That takes time, attention and effort. Secondly, eat what is good. Fill our time, energy and attention on the things that speak of love rather than the things that drag us away from God's holiness. And thirdly, to let our souls delight in self in abundance. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace, the prophet tells us. Jesus too takes us on a journey. During Lent, we are called to consider our journey with Christ to the cross. And today's reading is entitled, Repent or Perish. The reading begins with a recognition of suffering in the world and a question over, is this judgment over sin? Are people suffering because they've been especially bad or lived a life worse than another person? Jesus responds, no. Suffering is something that happens in life. Sometimes it's influenced by others, sometimes by accident. We cannot avoid suffering in the world. Jesus says very clearly it is not their sin here. But Jesus tells us all to repent. That is to turn to God. See things through God's eyes. Allow God's presence to transform us. Give folk a second chance. Let God's nourishment enable us to grow and bear fruit. That psalm that was spoken at the start of the service asked us to reflect on times we have all recognised the hallmarks of God's presence. In strength, patience, peace, joy and comfort. The fruitless fig tree that Jesus speaks of is not abandoned. It's given another chance to bear fruit. It's not left to its own devices, but instead 
the gardener does everything he can to dig around it and help it grow and flourish as it was designed to do so. We can all sometimes feel pretty fruitless. Instead of gentleness or self-control, we can feel that the world's too unfair, that we deserve more. We fail to act, fail to respond. We seek comfort instead of compassion. We resent others. We turn away from God. Jesus takes us on a journey. God with us. God who is constant, faithful and true. God who knows us inside and out, every move, every breath, every thought. We must listen, eat what is good and let our souls delight itself in abundance. One television program I enjoy watching at the moment is Ben Fogel, Lives in the Wild. I don't know if anybody else watches him. <laughs> he follows um, and he lives alongside people who have given up a way of life to have a simpler life in a remote corner of the globe, often without modern amenities. Ben immerses himself into their world to explore their motivation, their highs and lows, whilst living in often tough and harsh conditions. I find it interesting to hear how many of the people he encounters soon warm to his presence as he journeys alongside them and sensitively ask searching questions to discover more about who they are as individuals. And what brings them contentment and peace? You would think it would be the journalist that discovers all the answers. And sometimes it's the individuals when these questions are asked that realise themselves more about themselves. Jesus takes us on a journey and beckons us all to follow immerse ourselves in his ways. He invites us to travel with him, to listen and seek him first and foremost at the start, during and end of each day. To come to God in prayer and praise often and to live our lives with joy and thankfulness. The truth is that we are not on a simply on a journey to a destination where we will meet Jesus eventually, but that Jesus calls us to journey with him right now, here and now, in this place, in our lives. God knows us inside and out, and the invitation is to immerse ourselves in his way, one that leads us to grow and flourish to live out and show the world the hallmarks of God's presence in our lives, bringing strength, patience, peace, joy and comfort to others around us so that they may know God themselves. What a privilege, what a blessing. To conclude, I want to share with you a poem that many of you will be familiar with. Footprints in the Sand. One night I dreamed a dream as I was walking along the beach with my Lord. Across the dark sky flashed scenes of my life. For each scene I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonging to me and one to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that at many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. 
This really troubled me. So I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, you would leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you, never ever during your trials and testings. When you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. Let us take time to sit and feel God's presence. Ponder on his words for us today. Lord, thank you for your words of scripture and your, for your message for each one of us this morning. Jesus, our friend, we bring to you now our prayers for the church and for the world. Lord, we know as we weep, you are weeping too. We pray for Christians across the world. Those who are persecuted. Those seeking freedom. As we walk together, Lord, through Lent, May we all grow in grace and love for you and all our neighbours. Jesus, our shepherd, we pray for those who suffer today. However suffering comes, Lord, we pray that people will find the care and support they need. To stand firm and come through. We pray for ourselves, Lord, that we may be a light to those who are in the darkness. And a comfort to those who need strength. Lord, we hold in a moment people and situations that are on our hearts and minds right now. Bring hope, bring love and bring joy. Jesus, our prophet, we pray for those who give us hope. We pray especially for those who, like the gardener, give us a second chance. We pray for social workers across the globe. 
and for probation officers. We pray for all those who are trying to rebuild lives, supporting, encouraging, and serving others as they do so. We thank you, Lord, for their graciousness and vision. We pray that we may be slow to condemn and quick to see the image of God within everyone. Jesus, our life, we pray that you will fill us with hope, strengthen us by faith, and direct us by love, so that we may play our part in your kingdom of justice, love, life, and hope. We ask all these prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. It's lovely to see you all. We're going to sing a song and a blessing, and then we'll invite you to tell us what you've been doing. So we're going to sing Beauty for Brokenness, a wonderful prayer and song.
Jesus who suffered bless you with strength. May the Jesus who rose from the dead bless you with hope. May the Jesus who endured the cross bless you with joy. Amen. Amen. Amen.